Hey YouTube, I'm Direct, and this is answering the question, why are these the best controller binds for Fortnite 2? Let's get right to it. I'm gonna start off with my sensitivity, then we'll move on to my regular settings, and we'll finish off with my binds. A fortune cookie told me to use code Direct in the item shop for good luck. I don't know what that means, but I just wanna put that out there for you guys, see what you could do with it. Anyway, to start off, we're gonna head over to my sensitivity settings. I use the legacy settings, the old ones. So I have my XY on a .725, my wireless targeting, that's your ADS. When you aim down sights, 0.55. My scope sensitivity with a sniper or scoped AR is 0.65. And then my building and editing are 155 and 154. I already did a full breakdown. Uh, you can check the video above for why I think legacy settings are better than the new ones and why you may want to swap to the new ones. There are a couple reasons for it. Um, but anyway, check the video above if you want to learn more about that. So moving on to my settings, um, let's hop down here. First off, you need Sprint by default if you don't have it already. I'm sure most of you do, but that is going to help us out a ton later with our controller binds. It's going to make you a better player. Tap to search slash interact I have on so I can drop some goodies for my buddies when I pick them up, when I'm reviving them. You need to have reset build choice on. This is a must have. It does not affect anything anymore it used to before Builder Pro came out. I have a video above explaining how reset build choice will help you wall replace enemies twice as often. So you can check the video above if you need help with that. Aim assist obviously is going to be on. I do not have enough control of my thumb to turn it off. Turbo build on, easy stuff. Controller auto run I have on. You're going to want to turn this off if you are playing regular solos. If you're playing group matches, duo squads, or arena, then you need to have this on, obviously. It won't let you do it otherwise. But to me, it's not as much of a fun experience when I may be mechanically better than the other player, but my hardware is what's holding me back. I know not all PC players get 240 frames. Some might get 60, some might get 90, but they can turn off shadows and a host of other things that make their frames so much better than ours. So definitely turn this off whenever you can. Auto open doors, you're gonna to wanna to turn this off. I'm gonna show you why right here. Let's say that you are trying to do a play like this, where you're trying to bait a shot from someone else, right? So you do a quick edit reset, something like that. You put a door here to get them to try and shoot. If they're on the other side and they have auto door open for one thing, then it's gonna force them to open the door, which is gonna leave them wide open for a nice little pickaxe little pump to the face, you know, a little pump Johnson. The other thing is when you turn this off, you can actually get through doors faster. So if we scroll down here and we turn this off like we like to, you can do this a couple ways. I'm sure a lot of you know this, but if you swap to your builds, here's the normal, see how I walk through the door? But if I swap to my builds or if I swap to a weapon, you know, we got these things here. You can do this with this. If you just swap to a different gun, you cruise right through. So this is gonna help you in escaping dicey situations, stuff like that. Always turn that off, in my opinion. Confirm edit on release. This is a huge new setting that'll help you edit faster. I have a 90 second breakdown comparing the three editing styles in the link above. So click that if you want a full explanation. A quicker explanation is if you use normal editing where you have the same button, editing and confirming, I highly suggest you turn this on. If you use double edit binds, that's still gonna be quicker. So you should keep this off. I have perfect double edit binds that have no consequences. I have a set of double edit binds for those of you on a normal controller that have some trade-offs with it. So we'll get to that at the end of the video and you can decide for yourself which way to go about it. There's a building nerf that Epic kind of went through. I'm not sure if it was intentional or not. Having it off feels like a little bit better. It might be a placebo, but once they iron this out again, you should have it on. It will make your building quicker. Vibration off, personal preference. Usually I've heard that you can increase your performance, your frame drops, if you have all these off. I need them on for content. So if you don't need to make content, inform people, entertain them, whatever, you don't want to entertain yourself, then you can just turn these off. So that's all we have for the settings. Next up is the button binds. This is gonna be a little more extensive and I will show you why these are the best and how you can make them the best for a normal controller. I use a paddle controller, I use Evil Controller. Uh, these guys are the best in the business. See, so I have these paddles back here that make Fortnite easier for me. You guys know I used to use Scuff. I don't like them anymore. When they work, they're great. I hope yours works if you have one. But after four repairs, I kind of gave up on them on the same controller. That was enough for me. These guys, these controllers are comfortable, durable, and affordable. Those are the three abuls I want in a controller. So this is not a sponsored video. I just really like these controllers. Um, but if you're interested, I can give you a $20 discount or give you personal recommendations to see 
what would be right for you. Um, all you have to do to get that is just follow and DM me on Twitter at directyt. Now, I'm gonna break down my binds on paddles first since I already have it set up, and then I'll tell you how you can be better with a normal controller. The goal with paddles is to keep your thumbs on the sticks as much as possible so I can always be aiming while jumping or building or whatever. So to start off, I have jump and edit on the D-pad because they're gonna be on paddles, right? So I play normally, I just have these paddles. I'm not playing claw or anything. Um, I'm never gonna click these buttons. It takes a lot of time. Map I have on the left D-pad because here's where we will go. If I am trying to place traps, let's grab some traps here, okay? I'll grab five of them, okay? And I'm trying to build battle someone, right? Let's say trap them in the, this box. Normally what you have to do, it's, it's normally on square, I think, is how you place them. What I would have to do is I would have to aim first, then I would have to spam square, move my stick and spam square again, right? That's gonna make trap killing a lot more difficult. So instead, what I do is I have it on the touchpad. I highly recommend you do this either way. I have this on the touchpad. So now I can use my left thumb to place traps while I aim, and it's gonna be that much quicker. If you're on Xbox, I think putting it on your select button will do the same thing. It'll be just as good for you guys. So I have that in build mode, trap picker slash place slash interact. Since I don't jump on X, I want to put something on there that needs like immediate things to happen. So I put change materials on there. I think this is the best setup because if I'm ramping at someone, then I can change my materials as I go. And so it'll make it that much more difficult to shoot me out. Or maybe I'm just navigating up a hill or something. You know, I'm on metal. I don't want to use metal. Really quickly, I can swap to brick or wood or whatever. Other than that, the last two things for my binds are I have crouch, regular crouch on R3. I put that on build controls as well, so I can crouch when I'm building. I have repair on square. So even though I only have repair on square in build mode, even though I'm in combat right now, I have a gun out, whatever, I can still hold square and it'll work like that. The last thing is I just have reset on L2. This is just the easiest for me. Makes it really easy for me to reset edit really quickly. If I wanted to do a quick window edit reset, try and beta shot, something like that. Um, L2 means I also don't have to take my thumbs off the sticks, so that's the best place for it in my opinion. One other thing you can do if you want to is you can place your traps in build mode on L3. I feel like I click the touchpad a little quicker than I do L3 for whatever reason, but either one you put these on is gonna be great. It's gonna help you place them faster, and you'll be able to do it while aiming. If you do put your trap picker on L3, then you can either have sprint slash auto sprint on your touchpad in both modes, or you can go ahead and you can keep this as your map. One other thing you can do if you have four paddles and you're okay with giving up your marker is you can place interact on L3. So this is gonna let you grab a loot quicker because you're gonna be able to aim while you grab stuff. I know I've noticed this lately where I've been in fights for loot. Like let's say when I open a chest, Let's put a chest here. So I'm landing on this chest. Someone else is landing with me. I'm gonna hit L3 to search. And then instead of needing to look down and then hit square to pick it up, in which time the other guy might take it, I can just look down and pick it up at the same time. Finally on two paddles, what I would do is I would put jump or edit on L3 and I would put the other one somewhere on the D-pad. So let's say for instance, I want to put jump on L3, I want to edit on the D-pad, and I want to switch mode on circle. Now what I can do is I can jump and aim with L3, I can have my paddle as edit, and then I can have my other paddle as build. So you'll still be able to do the three key actions without taking your thumbs off the sticks. Now the last thing we're gonna do is the fun part. For those of you on a normal controller, these are the best binds you can possibly have in Fortnite 2. I say that because it's my opinion, a lot of people have agreed, but it's gonna be personal preference, so do whatever you want with these. The best thing you can do is use L3 for either jump or edit. You have to have crouch on one of the sticks, L3 or R3. For me, I like R3. I'm gonna show you why you cannot take it off this. There's two reasons. First off is if you don't have crouch on here, then you can't peek shot. I am pretty much shooting through my ramp here. You can barely see my head. I'm not gonna get shot when I do this. Second thing you need for it is when I am trying to make an edit play on someone, then what I want to do in a window edit is I wanna shoot, crouch, and turn to the side, okay? And if you do this quick enough, then you are shooting and your entire player model is moving to the side and ducking, making it really, really difficult for you to get hit. So it's gonna help you a ton with taking less damage. 
So put that on one of the sticks. In combat, you want to have it as just crouch, not crouch slash repair. So the reason is anytime there's one of these buttons that have two actions to them, like reload slash interact or crouch slash repair. When you have two of them, the first action is always going to be slower than if it was on its own. So I'm gonna show you my crouching here. It's gonna be tough to see, but if you do it in game, you'll be able to feel the difference. When I crouch, there is a super small but noticeable delay to the crouch. If I turn it on as just crouch without repair, it's immediate. And that's okay because when we go into build mode, we're going to change this to crouch slash repair. So this way we can still repair a building if we need to. We go into build mode and we can still repair stuff. My whole goal with this setup is to keep your thumbs on the sticks as long as possible. So you can choose if you wanna have jump or edit on L3 or the other stick, it's up to you. And the reason for that is if we're in a shotgun fight or we're trying to build or something like that, we can jump and aim at the same time, right? I'm clicking and I'm aiming. Instead of if you had it on X or A on Xbox, then I would have to click X, right? I'd have to be running up at a guy, right? Ramping at this dude. If I want to jump over, I'd have to take my thumb off the stick to jump and then I'd aim. So I couldn't do it as fluidly. It would, instead of being able to track someone like this, it would look more like this. It'd be super choppy. It makes your aiming difficult. I really think that the skill gap for this chapter is gonna be editing. If you can become a good editor, you're gonna be a lot better than most players. So in combat, I recommend putting jump on L3, crouch on R3, crouch by itself. We're gonna put edit on X because again, that's gonna be the quickest movement over here from the thumbstick to a button. And obviously we wanna we want be able to edit as quick as possible. Since we're talking about editing, I'm gonna skip ahead and show you double edit binds, how you can do this on a normal controller. So like I said before, double edit binds are quicker than edit releasing. If you don't wanna do this, then just turn on edit release and keep your editing the same. If you wanna speed up your editing a little bit in exchange for a small trade-off, then you're gonna to wanna to put edit on L1 and then you can have reset on L2 or R1, okay? So here's what happens when you're doing this. The one issue when you're using this setup of double edit binds is if I make this edit and I don't do it quick enough, I'm gonna place a cone on top here, okay? And the reason for that is because I am building a cone with L1, right? And then I'm also confirming with L1. So if I don't let go in time, it's gonna think I'm still trying to turbo build something. It's entirely possible to do this without placing the cone. You just have to let go quicker. But that is the trade-off. If you can't do it quick enough, you're gonna cone yourself off repeatedly. Same thing goes if you place confirm on L2. If you try and make a ramp edit, then it's entirely possible that you edit through a ramp and you place a second ramp. So double edit binds are gonna be quicker if you can handle that little issue. If you don't wanna deal with that, then you don't need a confirm button. It'll just do it as soon as you release. So recommendation for quickest editing in chapter two is to double edit bind with your confirm on L1. If we go back to combat, we have edit on X, switch mode on circle, all this is standard stuff. I put inventory on up. I have my map and my left D-pad in both modes because this isn't something that you need to do quickly. You can kind of look at the map, you can chill out for a second. You know, it's not like a bang bang play. In the middle of a gunfight, you're gonna be looking at your map, right? Same thing with sprint slash auto sprint. You can do this whenever you're eating a bag of chips, you're chilling with the homies, you just wanna sprint. You can hit this without an issue, it'll take a little bit of time. And then we have our emotes if you wanna flex on some people, laugh at some players, make them feel bad about themselves, that's up to you. Oh, uh, you put that on down on the D-pad. And the reason for that is we want to have our place marker on touchpad again, so we can aim and place our marker at the same time. And on top of that, it frees us up to put our traps in build mode right here. Again, that's going back to being able to trap, kill someone quicker where you can just spam that shit while you're aiming at the same time. You're gonna to wanna to put change mats slash traps on square. That is the one change over here. Um, in build control, you can put crouch slash repair like I said. Edit's gonna be there, jump's gonna be the same, and everything else is the same. The last thing I forgot about, 
in your settings. I explained Dead Zone more in depth again in that legacy versus new settings, new sensitivity settings video. But for Dead Zone, I have mine at a 0.10 and a 0.10. I use a thumbstick extender, which is my control freaks. You can also use evil sticks from Evil Controller, which pretty much just gives me more control over my aim. Um, so to compensate for that, I lowered this so things felt a little more immediate for me. If you're on Xbox, the default for this is a 0.2. You need to lower that. That is, you don't need to lower it. I think you should. It's going to be personal preference. But if you add it on a 0.2 on Xbox, try it on a 0.18 and then a 0.15 and try to get it down to a 0.12. On PS4, the default is a 0.12, which is a great setting. You can go lower if you feel like you can control it. Um, just don't put these too low or like it says the warning very low dead zones can cause drift thumbstick drifts where you're not touching your thumbstick at all but your aim's gonna be drifting so if you start getting something like this then just bump up the dead zone a little bit until it's gone. That's pretty much it man we dominated it today hope you guys learned something this video helped you out make sure to follow me on twitch I can't post my highlights on YouTube from twitch for whatever reason because my pc crashes so if you want to get the live greatness all the great highlights come chat hang out ask me some questions about tips on the game or just listen to my motivational speeches and trying to fish players to their death follow me on twitch.tv slash direct use code direct if this video helped you out again the fortune cookie i'm telling you man you're gonna have good luck if you use it turn on the notification bells to actually be subscribed to me so you can see it all my new videos, all my new tips. And other than that, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.